when we work together, entire generations are impacted for the better. Welcome to another episode of Awaken and Ascend. Today, I am here with the amazing Sabrina Victoria, who is the creator and CEO of Her Nation and host of her talk show. She is dedicated to giving you the tools to rise in your power and human better. Today, we're going to be focusing on from silence to strength, reclaiming her power. Sabrina, it's such an honor to have you here. I really appreciate the time you're spending with us today. Yes, girl. I'm so excited to hang. Yeah, fantastic. So from silence to strength, sometimes we find silence, strength in the silence, right? But you're going from silence to strength. So I'm really intrigued by that. And before we really get into it, I'm curious what really inspired you on this path? to my um, personal journey, like my personal development journey. Yeah, to reclaiming your power and being able to share that with others to elevate them and help them to be a full expression of who they are. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it comes from just not wanting my story to be for nothing. Um, I went for, for a very, very dark time for a lot of years, a lot of years, I'm close to probably two decades. And when you think about, when I thought about my story and all of the heartache um, that I went through, I didn't want the story to be for nothing. So Mm. I don't know if you or any of your listeners um, do inner child work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's. A definite must in the journey, I would say, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, our own inner children, because it's usually more than one, one part of our journey that's uh, needs that extra support. Now that we're yeah. adulting, we can yeah. offer that to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I believe, so it's your, so it sounds like your audience is well informed um, that we're every year we've ever been. So I have a two year old, a seven year old, a 19 year old, a 32 year old. 40 year old, 41 year old. I just turned 42 a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, inside of me. And every single one of my Sabrinas lived for one year, like um, did a journey for one year. And then they handed the baton off to the next year, to the next Sabrina. And when it comes to my story, there are so many Sabrinas around the age of 20 that did not want to live anymore. Um, They wanted to die. They wanted to commit suicide. They wanted to drive off bridges. They wanted to numb themselves with alcohol, with drugs. They wanted to leave their baby at a fire station and run away. And they didn't. Every day they wanted to, and every day they didn't. And I believe the reason they didn't is because deep, 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 deep inside them, they knew that there was a light and there was a fire in the future. And they had to just make it through one more day, just one Mm -hmm. more day. I just need to make it through one more day. And so the journey that I've been on, the uh, storytelling that I do, the inspiration that I now give is a thank you or a tribute to them for never giving up. Yay. Thank you to every one of you Sabrinas <laughs> that have come forth today yeah. in fullness and in wholeness and every part of you being able to express now who they are. So what brought you to this point? Um. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things. The main story that I tell a lot is I was in an abusive relationship. I was a single mom. I had no money. I'm broke. Um, One day I'm on the floor in the bathroom having a total mental breakdown. And I did a Google search. I always say Google saved my life. I Googled, why is my boyfriend bullying me? It's with a very, very mean man um, for over eight years at that point. And Google told me that I was in a highly narcissistic relationship, that I was highly codependent and empathetic, 
and that I had no financial fortitude. And literally within minutes, maybe even seconds, I did a complete 180 and I went from victim to um, stepping into my power. Literally in that moment, I um, scrolled for literally just moments, realizing not only was there a ton wrong with my spouse, but there was a ton wrong with me. Mm. And that was really a huge pivoting point. There's been several throughout my life, but that was a huge one. I dove headfirst into personal development, um, learned all about codependency, all about empathetic, um, people who had high empathetic vibes, really dove into money, finances, financial fortitude, and started to turn my life around. Uh, I love that so much. And there's real power in the awareness and the enlightenment, right? The shining light on what's really going on and how we're feeling and a wake up moment into wanting to live, right? Choosing to live at that point and, and wanting that and feeling driven and have the capacity to actually live it as well. I love how you talk about financial fortitude and that will to turn your life around, to make that choice and be able to create something for yourself that came through that awareness and the adversity and not wanting that anymore, right? Choosing something different. And I find there's like a real common pattern and transformation that we go through where we have that awareness and then we treat our journey as if it's a rite of passage, an initiation of sorts. And then we get into this rebirth process where we rise even higher and you're right it doesn't just happen once one and done right (laughs) there's many that we go through especially for healers and purpose-driven entrepreneurs and those that are here to serve a higher purpose and have high impact we can only take people as far as we've come yeah right and then elevate and then walk together and rise together and so you we mentioned earlier too that we wanted to talk about moving from silence to strength so share about that as well. What was this the silence and how did that lead you into the strength? Yeah, I mean, a lot of silence. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. And this isn't anything against uh, religion or anything against God or anything against Jehovah's Witnesses even. Um, mm-hmm. But in that um, sect, I felt very silenced. Um, I felt like I didn't have a voice. And that set the tone for years to come afterwards. Um, I ended up getting pregnant when I was 20 years old. I wasn't married. So because I wasn't married, I was cast out. I lost everything, my family, my friends, the community that I had uh, grown up with for 20 years, uh, just totally turned their back on me. That's part of the process of the religion. Mm. And you know, falling into darkness, falling into unworthiness, falling into low self-esteem, not feeling worthy. And again, in silence, right? Men meeting a man who was um, very abusive, mentally, emotionally, sexually, financially, not wanting to make him angry, needing, you know, the, um, the roof that he had over my head, Um, So again, silence, not wanting to disrupt, not wanting to cause anger. So needing to stay silent, not only for my own safety, but also for at that point, my son's safety. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot of silence, a lot of submissiveness, a lot of not speaking up, having no boundaries, um, having no rules, just kind of whatever anybody wanted to say to me or do to me, they were capable of doing. And I just sat there like a dummy. Mm -hmm. And when I started my journey into personal development, really honing in on finding my voice, finding my power, finding my confidence, figuring out who I was, Mm -hmm. you know, what my actual thoughts are. I think it's important to recognize that us as humans, we don't really most of us don't really have our own thoughts. Mm -hmm. All of our thoughts are kind of just in a washing machine with like everybody else's thoughts. And you kind of just cling to the thoughts of which somebody else has said that resonate with you. Um, But if you don't go out 
and find those individuals that really resonate with you, you know, their stories, their perceptions, their theories, their concepts. If you're only stuck in this little tiny itty box of your family, your church, your community, which is so small compared Mm -hmm. to the entire world, then you are just regurgitating. You're just regurgitating the things that are put upon you, not really questioning whether or not you even actually believe the things that are being taught or that are being said. So when you start to step out, you start to read, you start to listen to other things. I dove into podcasts, YouTube videos, audio books, regular books, um, and really searching for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Sabrina, that makes me think about identity and what we identify with versus a sense of self. And it's interesting to think about how we have to recover ourselves to actually be ourselves, right? Did you have any sense of self when you were in those dark spaces, when you were identifying with the religion and the relationship and being a new parent and Did you have any sense of self in those times? I mean, I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everybody has a sense of it, but it's just whether or not you allow that thing to actually show. Uh, Mm -hmm. When I talk about that light, when I talk about that burning desire inside of me, that was me. Yes. Like that was my real me. And I felt it consistently all the time throughout my life. Like I knew there was something bigger, there was something better, but fear gets in the way, uncertainty gets in the way, not knowing what it is Mm -hmm. gets in the way, right? It wasn't until I started stepping into personal development where I started to realize, oh shit, that's what that is. That's what that feeling is. That's what that spark is. That's what that fire is. That's what those dreams are. That's what that vision is. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I started listening to other people's thoughts, concepts, stories, theories, life's purpose, where I started to recognize, oh, yeah, because the situation that I was in, the lifestyle was that I was in very much dimmed all of that. Stay Uh quiet, stay calm, Mm -hmm. stay little you know, give your glory to a higher power. Nothing is yours. Everything is theirs. You are nothing. You're meaningless. You're small. You're insignificant. You're a sheep, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when I started to read into other things, realizing like, oh my, we are powerful. We are brilliant. We are creative, But it wasn't until I started, you know, opening myself up that I started to recognize that power, that strength within me. Absolutely. And open to new possibilities and new potentials for your life that it didn't have to be just that, right? That those people, places and things that dimmed your light and didn't allow you to really rise up in your power, to feed your fire, to feed your passion And the way I see passion, when you break up the word, it's pass I on. That I being your soul's expression of what you're here to pass on in this lifetime. And now I know you've developed this whole Her Nation, Her Talk, the H Club. There's so much going on that you've expanded to in who you are and that has brought forth and inspired so many other women. So I'd love to find out how you stepped into that. How were you able to really embody that strength? And tell us about what Her Nation is all about. Yeah, a lot of it is really being, you know, when you step into authenticity and you step into the importance of vulnerability with a community, I think that's really how her nation was birthed was, you know, I stopped hiding. I stopped being scared. I stopped worrying about what other people thought of me and really allowed myself to state out loud to an audience like, Hey, listen, I'm doing this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Hmm. I have no clue how to do the thing of which I am dreaming about or envisioning, but if you'd like to come along with me and watch me, you can do it too with me and we can watch each other. Then, um, 
And that's kind of how the whole thing started. The whole thing started with just this thought process of, I don't know, like if we're open and we're honest about where we're at, can we actually help each other? Right. Cause it isn't mm-hmm. until you're vulnerable with, Hey, I need help with this where somebody can step in and help you. And that's the first issue is like, nobody wants to admit that they need help. Everyone wants to act as if they got all their shit figured out mm-hmm. and they spend years reading all the books and watching all the videos. It takes so much time versus just sitting down with the person who knows the answer, asking them one simple question. They give you the exact answer, the time of which we're spending or I'm spending now in problems goes from this to this. Because I don't, it's a problem that I have and I don't have to spend two months, you know, watching videos and reading books in order to really understand what is going on. I can literally just go straight to a source of somebody who maybe went through something similar, ask for some sort of a feedback, some sort of advice, some sort of um, inspiration from them, and then Mm -hmm. immediately get an answer and immediately start to pivot. And, um, that's the beauty of community. And that's the beauty of which we're building here at her nation. So her nation is a, a community based environment. It's, I teach the give, get method, meaning we always show up with a mindset to give. We lean very heavy on the law of reciprocity, meaning mm. if you show up and give, 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 and every woman, woman in there is also showing up with a mindset to give, give, give. What does that mean? That means that you are surrounded by hundreds or thousands of women that are looking to give to you. And the gift in that is you are now sitting in a community with women who are living, looking to give to you, right? So we're all sitting in that gift, knowing that that gift only exists because of the mindset of gift. Oh, that is so beautiful. And I also thought it was interesting how you went from Google, which changed your life, right? That first Google search into not needing that lonely way anymore, but it's a great starting point. Like if you're just trying to sort things out, but how quickly we can accelerate in life business and elevate our mind, body, and spirit through connecting with people and each other and building that community and going for it, even if you don't know exactly how it's going to work or what you're doing, you know, just really just taking that first step. And then the rest of it becomes more clear and that you're able to go to each expert and really nurture each other's gifts. And that law of reciprocity is such a beautiful approach to all of that. And I know you also have a magazine, Her Nation magazine, and I'm a monthly contributor to that as well. And so that's a focus of health, wealth, and leadership. So I'm curious why you chose those three topics. Were those like real key turning points for you, like messages through health, wealth, and leadership that supported your journey? Yeah, not only my own journey, but also just kind of looking around. I think women, a lot of times we really hone in on relationships. We really hone in on motherhood. We really hone in on keeping house, being organized. And because we only have so much bandwidth, right? We're trying to take care of our husbands. We're trying to take care of our kids. We're trying to take care of ourselves. We got our mental thing going on. We're working. Like there's so much going on. And I think a lot of times I have found for myself and just kind of looking around that so many women put those three things on the back burner. Mm. Not necessarily all three of them, but at least one of the three, right? Our health, our wealth. And our leadership, our voice, our power, our confidence, you know, so many women, I see them, they, they grow, they expand, they're in their caring. And then at 40 years old, they turn around and their health is in the garbage. Their wealth is in the garbage and their voice is in the garbage. Right. And, or, right. Maybe Mm -hmm. two out of maybe one out of the three. So really kind of just looking around and saying, Hey, who's helping these women? Is there a place where we can hone in on these three things that so many women are having trouble with? And there just isn't right. Is there health Mm -hmm. magazines? Yes. Is there wealth magazines? Yes. Um, but is there a place where women can go and get help on all three of those, their health, their wealth, and their leadership? The three key points to being alive even. Yeah. And there just weren't. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
it's the three things that I'm most passionate about. I think that we need the most learning, the more, the most education on those three categories of our life. Um, it's also the three categories that I think a lot of women shy away from. They're not super comfortable, right? It all feels very ego. <clears throat> you know, if you're trying to work on your body and look hot, it's a little ego. You're trying to work on your money, it's kind of ego. You're trying to work on your voice, your power, right? And a lot of those things are shamed mm -hmm. around women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, placing it in a powerful place, placing it in front of these women and just saying, hey, listen, we need to really hone in together. We need to work together to fix this. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love how you filled in the gap and then brought in these other women, gathering everyone together to, to for fulfillment, right? So that we don't feel voids or shamed or like something's missing, that we're always searching for that something more, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we don't what we're all really know searching everything. for is community. Yeah. We exactly. don't all know everything. You're right. And that's yeah. the thing. And so many of us shame ourselves because we're like, I know a lot about this, but I don't know anything about that. And it's like, girl, that's why we're in community. Yeah. Because you know what you know, you bring that power to the table, own what you know and teach it. But then mm -hmm. also allow yourself to show up vulnerable in the areas of which you don't know so that another woman can teach you. See, when we show up vulnerable with questions on how to do something, you're actually giving a gift to another woman because then you're allowing her to stand in her power and teach you. So not only are we allowing ourselves to show up powerfully in the areas that we are good at, we're mm -hmm. also at the same exact token when we're showing up in that give, get method right? Teacher, student mm -hmm. concept or teachers and we're students at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're allowing another woman to stand in her power and teach you, right? That's yeah. a gift. These are gifts that we're doing for each other. And this is how we're standing so powerfully as a community. Absolutely. And we also mentioned about reclaiming your power, mm -hmm. which implies that at some point we didn't think we had it or we gave it away or someone took it. What are some of the signs you think of giving away our power and what's key in being able to reclaim it, to call it back mm. home to us? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it comes with that, um, that second guessing. I was actually just, oh, I wish I could remember it. I was just on Facebook this morning and it was asking a question about um, something about being a people pleaser. Ah, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, are you be, you know, be honest. Are you a people pleaser? And even I myself, I right away was like, no, not a people pleaser. I'm healed. <laughs> but the way it was written, it said, no, I put myself first. It felt aggressive to me. I was like, Ooh. I put myself first. Ooh, that's aggressive. Uh -huh. And because I had that thought, I realized, well, I still got work to do. Hmm. I still have work to do, right? So mm -hmm. I chose a different one. I'm like, no, that's not true. It, I wish it were true that I put myself first in all situations, yeah. but it's not. Mm -hmm. So um, really honing in on that questioning that we have, you know, when um, somebody asks you something and you think about other people before you think about yourself, you know, where do you, simple things, where do you want to go eat? And you're like, well, I know that he doesn't want to eat this. I know that she doesn't like this. I know that blah, 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 blah. That wasn't the question. The question was, <laughs> where do you want to eat? Right. Yeah. So yeah. really starting to step into that. And these small things are things that I have gotten really good at, right? Decisiveness. Mm answering questions immediately. If you don't have an answer to a question, give a percentage. This is things that I do all the time now. It's like, mm -hmm. what's your thought on this? What's your viewpoint on this? I'm 80% sure. I'm 93% sure. I'm almost there. I'm like, at like 99%, right? So still giving an answer, still being decisive, still showing up for yourself, but allowing yourself to show up vulnerable in the area of which, listen, I'm not at hundred percent. I'm literally mm -hmm. just not, I'm not all in, I'm not all out. I'm still hovering and being authentic with the percentage that pops up in your head to be able to give that person some insight as to what's going on inside of you, right? Yeah. So not mm -hmm. everything is definitive, but 
allowing yourself to show up vulnerably in that area to say that you're not definitive. That's the vulnerability. That's the authenticity. It takes time. And it isn't it always, and it isn't just like a decision. It isn't like Jennifer and I sit down for a session and then all of a sudden I'm healed. Mm-hmm. No, it's a consistent thing that you have to consistently catch yourself. You have to consistently remind yourself. You have to consistently say, oh, that did not go good. I have to do better next time. Next time I have to say this, I have to do this. I have to show up in this way. I have to apologize. I have to um, set clearer boundaries. You know, I actually just heard this the other day. Um, I'm working a lot on my feminine energy right now because I've been mm-hmm. told that I show up very masculine. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things that my coach was telling me was um, I had showed up a little on the passive aggressive side with an individual. Um, they didn't really, really know that I was showing up passive aggressive. I don't even know if they knew that I was irritated. But when I was being honest with her, I said I was totally being passive aggressive. I was totally showing up in a very immature way, not communicating correctly. Mm-hmm. And she said, that's abuse. She said, you're abusing that person because you're not allowing them to get the full communication of your thought process. So they're not even able to show up the way that you want them to show up. And then you're choosing to punish them for that. And then they're not going to fix it. And then you're going to punish them again for that. That's abuse. So she said, you have to apologize. And that felt so good to me. I was like, oh my gosh, I do need to apologize for being inauthentic to myself. Mm. Right? Like I wasn't being true to myself. I was being quiet. I was being small. I wasn't showing my voice. I got scared. I was fearful. I didn't set boundaries. So instead I was passive aggressive, you know? Ignored mm. a phone call, gave the silent treatment, put up a wall, did a gray raw for no reason other than my own fear, my own insecurities. So that's something, right? She's like, you need to work on that. You need to sit down. You need to have a conversation. You need to say, hey, listen, I apologize for not showing up authentically to myself, therefore punishing you. So these are all things that we need to work on where if somebody's not pointing it out, if you're not working with a coach or reading a book or listening to podcasts, we don't know. And then we're hurting ourselves and we're hurting the people within our community, within our family, within our circle. And that's, what's helpful about community too, isn't it? Is reflecting these things back to each other and having a coach to support us and to help us see things we might not necessarily see. And it's another example too of the silence to strength, right? Absolutely. Instead of being passive aggressive, like being authentic, yeah. stepping into it, showing that strength to the courage to effectively communicate. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, wow. What an amazing conversation, Sabrina. I just love this so much. And I know that our audience is too. Each and every one of you, I'd love to hear in the comments what's really been resonating for you and what's got you thinking. Sabrina, what if people want to connect with you directly? How can they do that? Um, My website has all of my information on it. That's probably the easiest, sabrinavictoria.com. But I'm also just Sabrina Victoria if you Google me. Um, yeah. Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, um, TikTok, Sabrina Victoria across all the boards. Just look for my curly hair. <laughs> Perfect. And of course, we'll have the links to make it easy for you down in the show notes, along with everything you need to know about Sabrina. And Sabrina, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us while you're here? Yeah, I mean, my closing thoughts is always a mantra that I kind of adopted when I was around 26, 28 years old. Um, there were, it was a time in my life, very dark time in my life, uh, where I wasn't wanting to live and I wasn't wanting to breathe and I wanted to run away so bad. And I remember breathing, just taking a deep breath and just silently telling myself that everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that mantra has been with me till this day, take a deep breath when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm feeling stressed, when I'm feeling anxiety, I just remind myself, listen, everything's going to be okay. 
you know, one of the things that I think is so important for all humans is to take notice, to write lists of all the things they've done, mm. all the good they've been through, all yeah. the bad they've been through, all the things they've accomplished. And look at that, hang that up somewhere and remind yourself that you're capable of doing hard things. You're capable of getting through things. And when you can actually have a visual for yourself and then you can breathe when you're in those points of overwhelm or you're stressed, you can breathe and you can say, honestly, because you know for certain that everything's going to be okay mm. because you're capable. And that's what's really gotten me through. That's really what's gotten me through is literally that one silent mantra and just a quick reminder of girl, girl, you've done this. Mm. You've done this. Everything you have been through has gotten you to this point, has um, strengthened you for this challenge. It's like going to the gym, you know, all the things we've been through. It's, it's your muscle. You've been yeah. strengthening your muscle so that you can get through this too. And there's going to be more. There's going to be that. more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. part of it. And I get so excited when there's more because I'm like, damn, I get to add this to my freaking list. Damn. Hell yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what a kick ass freaking story that I'm now going to be able to use to inspire other people. Yes. That's the way that I view it. And I think that's the way we should all view it. Totally. And what a beautiful way too to continue nurturing your inner children, you know, stepping oh, yeah. in and saying everything is going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much for being here. Thank you to each and every one of you that have been tuning in to Awaken and Ascend. We're here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Can't wait to see you again. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. See you again next time. Bye for now.